Why did the bubble go to school? Because it wanted to be a pop star. Speaking of bubbles, let's dive into one of history's most infamous bubbles, the tulip mania. Now, for those of you who might not know, economic bubbles are situations where the price of something shoots up to stratospheric levels, only to come crashing back down just as quickly. Imagine blowing a soap bubble, watching it float up and up, getting bigger and bigger, and then pop! That, my friends, is an economic bubble. This is exactly what happened during the tulip mania. During the Dutch Golden Age, tulips had just been introduced and they became the latest fashion. The prices for these bulbs went sky high, reaching extraordinarily high levels. But then, in February of 1637, the bubble popped and the prices dramatically collapsed. So remember folks, next time you're thinking of investing in tulips, remember what happened in 1637. But hey, don't think we've learned our lesson from the tulip mania. We humans have a knack for creating bubbles, and I'm not talking about the ones in your champagne. Let's take a little stroll down memory lane, shall we? Remember the dot-com bubble of the late 90s? We were all so enamored with this new thing called the internet, we started throwing money at anything with a dot-com in its name. It was like the wild west of e-commerce, with everyone trying to strike digital gold. And strike gold they did, until they didn't. And who could forget the housing bubble? It was as if we'd suddenly discovered that houses were the new tulips. We were flipping them like pancakes, convinced that the prices would keep soaring to the sky. But alas, much like Icarus, we flew too close to the sun and came crashing down. So whether it's tulips or tech stocks, we sure know how to inflate a good bubble. Now, if there's one thing we've learned from all these bubbles, it's that they're a lot like your Uncle Bob's stories at Christmas. They start off exciting, but they always end in a crash. From the tulip mania of the 17th century to the more recent economic bubbles, we've seen how the allure of quick riches can lead to irrational exuberance. The pattern is almost predictable an initial spark of interest, a fiery explosion of investment, and then the inevitable burst. But what's the real takeaway here? It's not to avoid bubbles altogether. Rather, it's about understanding their nature. They're not just economic phenomena, they're human phenomena. They're born from our hopes, our dreams, our greed and our fear. Each bubble tells a story, a story of ambition, of desperation, and ultimately, of caution. They remind us that what goes up must indeed come down. So next time you find yourself in the midst of a bubble, just remember, it's not the popping that's the problem. It's forgetting that bubbles pop in the first place.